I, I don't think this is going to be a very long one. We're going to be really, really informal because it's me, Kate, and Utah, and maybe Martin's listening, but maybe not. Um, <laughs> your technical stuff. Um, and a couple of people can't can't make it. Um, so first up, last McCore is almost classified. Okay. okay. <laughs> it's very it's very close. I, I have to type up a, a, a document. That's what S left. I didn't get to it, and I tried to shortcut it, and they didn't go. Standard Bloom did not go for it, and <laughs> so, so I'm actually going to type it during this. I think. So for those of you who don't know, uh, Ben is our review manager, and basically, probably one of the few reasons yeah. we're actually over the line right now. Um, so yeah, we went through public review over Christmas, and then extended out another week because. Um, just for full transparency, we found a thing that was broken, or at least not quite as easy to use as we thought it was. So we um, did some tweaking and got that out. So Lassima Core is almost ready to go. Um, Kate, you test when you want to add at that point. If, if it helps, uh, I'll throw a few links in the chat that include um, the wiki and discussion are kind of where some of the most active uh, follow up was. Um, if part of what helps is to try and I think a lot of you here might already be familiar with it, but if not, um, if it helps to try and get an orientation around what is this thing called Latimer Core, um, part of where we are right now too is um, all ears for people who have questions or interest in more examples, that kind of thing going forward. Um, since that's fleshing out that side of things, um, sounds like it might help, um, along with some other things. I'll stop. Yuta, do you have thoughts? Yeah, most of you know that in my course, or I feel talking to the... Um, Latimer Core, as you know, it's not a bag of terms. It, it has structure and um, it's quite interesting to deal with that structure. It's not, it's it's a beautiful structure. I really like it, but actually using it, um, it's interesting. And it, um, I find it very interesting. It brings up a lot of um, insights, um, I thought. Um, and I'm very curious how this is, how we are, as a community are going forward um, using it and what kind of solutions we are coming up with. Um, I truly believe it is a way forward to go to this structure. So very, very much looking forward to the next developments. So is there anyone here who doesn't have a, a Scoobies at all what last before is? And you can put a little hand up or like, flash your screen or something, or is everybody at least, uh, you're here, so you must have heard of, heard of it, but did anyone come thinking, well, let me just go find out what, what Latimer Core is, because we can do a, a quick overview, if anyone would like that. Go, Marie. M maybe I can just, I'm gonna lower the hand. Um, just to, because like, so, I'm I'm somewhat familiar with Latimer Core, right? Um, <laughs> I think, but my question is more like because we're talking about structure and everything, and I and I don't know if that's like a naive question or something. But uh, right now we're looking with the developers into making like a, a GR cycle export formatted as Latimer Core, and because of the nestedness of Latimer Core, we were thinking JSON format. But I was just wondering if that's the right way as in like what would make the most sense so json for us makes sense because we have an api that's already giving output in json but if there is a particular you know need for something from it differently or something people want to use it would be nice to know at least even if we cannot necessarily do it but just to to have an idea it's not particularly flat so i wouldn't expect a table but maybe i don't know it would be nice to know yeah, a few of the examples that we've mocked up so far have 
focused a lot on JSON, but um, we've also had some people, so Martin and I think Ben, you had also worked out some examples in SQL, um, like with a little SQL DB type of uh, thing. So in the repo, there are some links to those examples, um, but otherwise though too, in terms of passing things back and forth, especially on GR SciCall, where there might be a web presentation of a given um, record or group of them, um, JSON examples are something that we're trying to mock up a bit more in depth. Um, so the examples that we have reference a slightly older uh, Latimer core um, iteration, I think. So updating those to reflect more the current and ratified um, state of the standard is something that we're working out. Uh, in terms to though then of how would people for instance, submit their records to GR site call. I don't know if that's maybe a different end of what you're talking about, Marie, um, part, partly. Uh, so, so sorry, but I froze for a bit, so I didn't hear everything. <laughs> I heard all the way to examples from SQL and then a lot of examples in <laughs> JSON. So I, I, yeah, so sorry. Um, that's okay. And I, not that I, my brain froze, my computer actually froze just so you know, um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, uh, just, uh, yes, my question was actually both ways. So I want to have export uh, as a Latimer core, and ideally I want anyone who's formatted their data as Latimer core to be able to import whatever has an equivalent in GR cycle, which might not be everything because you know but uh <laughs> so so yeah either either way would be nice to uh to uh sort of uh accommodate as much as possible so if yeah if there is a preferred already way of formatting the data it's good to know uh and it's good to have examples also just because um it, it helps with the implementation practicality and all of that um that's why but I hope I didn't miss everything important. <laughs> I don't know. Kate, if you want to summarize, and then Yuta has her hand up. So we can go that way, unless, Kate, you're good. Sure. Uh, summary wise, I think we tried to be format agnostic as much as we could. But the gist of it was um, where you want to implement in a particular language, uh, we try to have examples to help help that out. Um, I'll throw a few of those in the notes. But Yuta, go ahead. Too. <laughs> Thanks. There's also a developing JSON schema um, scheme for um, for shaping a, a registry and its records. So if you are interested, I can share that. I don't think it's on the website, um, but it's developing. And um, you, I think that would be a good idea um, for sharing a, a specific format and um yeah letting people know how you would like your json um files to look like um otherwise yeah as kit said it's agnostic if you have a preferred way um you can do so i think json's a good way to go um like you to and kate said it's it's for everybody else's benefit we 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 don't make a recommendation that way because we didn't feel that we had either the time to develop all of the examples to do that, but JSON is is definitely one of the ways that Kate and Martin and Yuta and the, the techie people were were thinking it would come out. Um, for for other folks around the room, just wanna kind of one of the things that makes Les McCall a little bit um, more defined than some of the other standards that are out there is that we we very much view three types of users for it. So there's the, the aggregator who's asking everybody for their records in a particular format. Then there are the, the people providing the data in that format. And then there are the users who are going to take the, the data in a particular format. Now, those three things can be the same, but they don't necessarily have to be the same. Um, and then what you'll find in, in the documentation is there is a set of classes that usually have scheme or schema. Um, associated with them. And the idea of that is that if you are an aggregator or a, as an institution, you want to put your data out, you can choose um, the terms that you want to use and create your own 
Latimer Core version and publish that because that means that other people can use it. So we're all we're all sitting here waiting for Marie and the guys to get the the GBIF um, Latimer Core package out so that other people can use it. But that doesn't stop you creating your own and defining it and then using those schema classes to say, okay, world, this is how we put our our data out, or this is a particular project that wants to use maybe slightly different fields to, to GBIF. Um, but because it's a standard, the fields are all defined and the relationships between the fields are defined. Um, and then it's also on the aggregator side or the requester to say what the um, particular control vocabularies that are gonna be associated with any of those are. Um, we've made some suggestions on the wiki, but we're not always the expert in that subject matter. So as different groups put their, their Latin McCall bundles together, we'll absolutely take your um, suggested vocabularies and put those back on the documentation for other people to use. I don't know if that helps set a scene for folks. Yeah, I was going to ask about controlled vocabularies, but maybe other people can ask their questions and then I can ask mine. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah. Or not, I can talk also, it's fine. I'm happy to I'm talk. I'm happy to talk to you, Marie, because you're fabulous. Keep going. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, yeah, so that's another challenge and actually was talking about it with Matt Woodburn. Um, so uh, with GR Cycle, we have a number of controlled vocabularies that we inherited. Uh, some of them uh, we want to change. Uh, some of them uh, as are as they are right now, and we don't necessarily have like one ultimate better way to do it. But uh, the 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 things the thing is, we want the vocabulary to be relevant for the community. And uh, we have a system that allows us to uh, sort of have vocabulary editors. So potentially have different, like uh, updated, updating the vocabulary, have versions that we can use to organize GR cycle data. And, um, and my sort of problem or challenge or however you want to call it is that uh, I would like it if someone some group, maybe Latin core maintenance group or whatever this is going to be called, would be there to maybe not be the main editor if you don't want to, but to advise on like how best to like update the vocabulary when it comes to it. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, if no one else comes forward from the community, I mean, it's going to be me doing it. But maybe because you already look, there's already a community interested in like description of collections and so on. Maybe there are some good ideas on what could be improved in terms of vocabularies, what could be added. Yeah, so the other thing is that the vocabulary could be hierarchical, um, which isn't the case right now at GR cycle, but it will become hierarchical. Um, and so that's another aspect. So it's not just uh, also the vocabulary itself, um, as in, it is the vocabulary itself, but it's also the organization of the vocabulary. So, um, so my question is like, first, I kind of already asked a bit around if there are any like official vocabularies for those fields, and I was told that there is no official recommendation from the Latin core, but just ideas. And my other question is like, would there be anyone interested in like maintaining a vocabulary that could be on GR cycle and that can be accessible from other systems because we also have an API which allows querying the vocabulary so potentially other apps could be using the same one um, and so that's kind of like an open question more to the community not just your cycle uh, not sorry not just your cycle and not just that's more core but maybe other people who are interested in describing collections so yeah if anyone has thoughts on the topic I'll be interested to, hey, to hear them there, there is a vocabularies working group, no task group, whichever way around it is. And how do we, how do the the different maintenance groups, um, how how are we supposed to interact with those with that particular group? So, that there's well, there's different levels of this. So there is the really full on formal publishing of a control vocabulary to like the standards level of documentation, which is a bit 
more than what most people are looking to do. They really want to share these terms list with definitions and things. So Tadwick doesn't really have the infrastructure at the moment to handle that kind of thing, although they really need to. Um, just sharing basic list, right? It doesn't have to be ratified to a standard. It's not this like um, a step degree of establishment means, I think is one that Quentin did. That one's, but that one's very detailed and, and it's more than what I think most people are looking for. Um, and so, but we need a way to share that information. And, and I'm not sure what the status of that group is or if they're looking into that, but it's it's one of the issues the tag is gonna take up this year for sure as a priority, having some sort of infrastructure where people can share value. Because there are, there are gonna be controlled vocabularies that are specific to a standard, but then there are ones that are gonna to need to be shared across the standards. And so it gets, for me, it's like, okay, so the maintenance group works on one with Marie, or a set of them with Marie, but then they don't really belong to Lamacore, so they have to land somewhere right. that everyone can take advantage of them. So I'm not, I honestly don't know what the... I'm working on it right now with geosciences. So I, I'm working on how to, what metadata should go to with each one, right? If it's a classification scheme, if it's a value list, that kind of stuff, and getting that metadata structure, because you at least need terms, definitions, source a few fields and then you'll have a metadata record that actually describes where it came from what it is all that kind of stuff and i need to so hammering that stuff out but um the idea would then be to sort of have something working people could criticize it so <laughs> and then reuse for, to share things so i have one thought and then i'm gonna throw it across okay and anyone else who has thoughts i wonder um so for folks who do um, hopefully i'm not teaching anybody stuff they um, already know uh, apologies for that but so every standard comes with sort of two halves or two pieces. It comes with its normative, the normative part of the standard, which is the, the bit that is that goes out for ratification, it's codified. It basically is in this little ball of concrete until there is an official need to smack it with a hammer and break it apart, right? And that has to go through um, expert review and then peer review. But then there's this non-normative section. So for us, I think Kate put the links to the wiki. So we have like a, a a wiki and a discussion area within our repo that is non-normative and doesn't have to go through that kind of thing. So my question back to you, I guess, Ben, is with the stuff you're doing for minerals, are you doing that? Where are you planning on ho holding the thing that you come up with before it becomes like a, before Tadwick gets its act together and gives it a proper home? In a GitHub repo. Okay. Right now it's being pieced together in a Google Drive registry, but that's a, once I get it formalized and situated the way I want to, I'm going to push blocks of types of content, like classification schemas, timescales, that kind of stuff. It's going to go into a GitHub repo that's publicly accessible. So we could steal, yes. steal from you and do it on the, <laughs> do it on the non-normative side. Absolutely. So I'm trying to work out what that halfway step is before Tadwick gets it put back together and gives us a phone. Right? Dana and Nichols runs are first. So everybody <laughs> should be happy. <laughs> so I just got to figure out how to, hierarchical structures are hard to document, figure out what kind of format people would find readily available. So, Have you done the easy one yet? The non, the non-hierarchical bunch bag of terms thing? Yeah, yeah. Mineral habits. It's just a list of habits and just definitions of those habits. It could not be simpler, but I'm having trouble getting a, a good source. It's always something, you know. So, <laughs> but, so is that maybe something we can work with you, Marie? And if you've got stuff that we can use Ben's structures in his repo, at least to hold them on the non-normative side. And I'm just saying stuff, hoping that Kate and Yusuf's eyes are twitching and they're about to tell me to shut up. Um, maybe that's the way we could do it. And then we stop talking. <laughs> I'll say one thing. I, I'm, I'm going to post a publication yeah. in the window. It's um, it's a guide on construction management format of control vocabularies. It's amazing. And I highly recommend if you're creating one to read that document because it, it has it's really, really good. Sounds good. But Ben, I, I, I think I, if I remember correctly, you're working with my colleague Cecilia on geostratigraphy vocabulary also for GBIF. Uh, in... Yeah, the time scale. Uh, yes. Yeah, the time scale. Yeah. Is it? Is it? Yeah. OK. So um, so it, the work you're doing is going to go in the same like vocabulary server that the same place that I want the geocycle vocabulary to go into. So it will be like all in one yes. place for us. At least. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's the general idea. Um, so I'll start it here and then push it to Tadwig yeah. repo and have it more formalized. I just got to yeah. take it stepwise, right? Yeah, and, okay. 
So we could do the same process for things that are yeah. on the more collections side side of things. Yeah. So helps. I was thinking about not making something from scratch because Geosec already has data that's mapped to this vocabulary, but right. more like putting like everything that I already have um, to some degree. And now I'm wondering if I'm frozen. No, I'm not frozen. So like, uh, I can, I, you know what? I can show you. Maybe I can show you <laughs> sure. if you want. Yeah, um, why are you doing that? What I'm thinking, because GBIF has a repo, right? And if if you're using the same way to handle the vocabulary as Ben is in this pre-ratified holy grail of Tadwig says it's wonderful. Like if you're holding the, the vocabularies that you come up with in the same way that Ben's holding his, people can grab them until they move through that ratification process, right? No. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. We so, just need well, some key metadata to go with it. Version, citation. There's some really key metadata to make sure that it's locked yeah. in. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Well, yeah. Oh no. Why isn't why aren't you working? Oh, you're working. So I can show you maybe, I don't know. Is is this the right place to show things like that? Go for it. <laughs> Go for it. This is the working session. This is gonna <laughs> Okay. Okay. So I can show you maybe something. And then so this is um this is the 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 registry interface the on UAT. So it's like a it's like the interface we use to manage information in GBIF and GeoCycle registry, but it's the UAT version. So it's like for the test system, it's not the actual production data, but uh, so just that I can show you what I've tried to do. So uh, right now, if I go to uh, uh, GeoCycle and I look at uh, an entry in GeoCycle and uh, I'm just going to do that. Um, there, There is, uh, for example, uh, uh, content type where is this content type here so uh, what we have is like this like flat drop down list with no context and uh, which is really like when you think about it right it's like a it's a hierarchical vocabulary already but it's like this is what we inherited so we have this like flat sort of list and people can select some um and so what i want is i i put this one um here so well, by, by I, I mean my colleague Cecilia, but anyway. So this one is very bare. I can show you how it looks like for some other system. But essentially here, uh, I have like uh, this uh, hierarchy that's been built in the vocabulary. And then uh, and then in it, I have, this is like just the data that was already in GR cycle. I didn't change anything other than making it hierarchical and also adding, well, there's a problem I'm including here, but uh, uh, the idea is also to add like um, labels so I can have more languages added to it and some definitions and, and things like that. So that's, that's sort of adding like definitions. So adding context for each value when necessary and also adding uh, language labels so that uh, people can um, see it in other languages than English if needed uh, so yeah and uh, I don't know if there's a good one to show here uh, but uh, I know that uh, uh, we have also much more complete ones so this is again on the test system but I think there's the same on the production this one is one that has been filled by quantum groom so the definitions and concepts are a little bit more um, elaborate but you can see like you can have definitions in other languages so this is where I want to put the existing geocycle vocabulary. And, I, and then what I can do is I can, I can have someone yeah. edit and add things that can be. Please go ahead. <laughs> someone said something. No. OK. Sorry, I think I accidentally it was my, my fault. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Well, my point being that so then we have this interface which allows this tinkering and everything, and it can be on the test website, and then we can put it on the production website eventually. But that's kind of like it allows editors to go in and add things and so on, and then the content created there can be accessed uh, from an API uh, for GBIF, but also potentially for anyone interested. It's publicly accessible. Um, and where was I going with that? Yes, so um, 
what I meant to say is that what I would want to do is like put what I have already instead of like uh, asking someone to come up from scratch, uh, from, uh, vocabulary from scratch, because I think that's very difficult. And also it doesn't make sense because we already have data mapped to the vocabulary. So, I mean, we want to be able to not lose that and then have other people <laughs> uh, who would come in and then be able to review that or maybe, you know, add concepts that are missing or, you know, change a little bit. So that was kind of what I was thinking. And I would like if people doing that was not just me, because that would, not that I don't have the time, I can spend all my time on GeoCycle. No, no, I'm kidding. But it would be just nice to have people who know the subject matter and have, you know, thought about it before. So, um, yeah. Go, Yuta, you put your hand up. Um, I, it's great to hear that Chizok has already some, some actually like hands-on infrastructure where you are maintaining these vocabularies and that's, I think, um, that's quite exciting to see. Um, I have more, uh, kind of like, um, a community, community question or so. It's basically maybe it's similar to what you are asking. Um, how are we approaching these questions? Because my impression, so like Ben, you are you are diving into um, vocabularies. I have been on the side diving into vocabularies and looking at um, how to document them. Um, so we are all coming from different directions and approaching the same question. Um, and we all do something, but we do it maybe a little bit different. Um, so how, how are we approaching this um, that we can actually really integrate? Um, so what, what I, maybe what I think or the experience with Latimer Core is that it has been, what I find, I, I'm a latecomer to the group. Um, I joined, I don't know, two years ago, one year, something like that. So late in the process. And I found it really productive that we were meeting every week um, for one, two hours and we're working on this. And that was the only way to get through this really big standard. And vocabularies are not smaller. I mean, the question of documenting standards, um, it's not really smaller. Um, and when you look into them, I mean, yeah, wherever you look, there are these details that need to be straightened out. Um, so I feel we don't really have found a, a way to, to go forward with that. I, and like from a recode background, we are currently developing the, uh, vocabularies too. We have exactly the same problem. And, I have like a, um, the concept for a documentation infrastructure. I think I I told some people I have two to four. My camera is switching on the dog. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Did we lose you? Yeah. Could you hear me? I so my my camera is uh, tending to switch off. Um. So. How, how are we approaching this? Um, is there a better way to approach this? Um, yeah, just putting this out. Anyone sure. else want to respond? Sure, I, I can. Um, so the way I'm going about it is, well, there's a couple of things you have to, there's, there's the guidelines part and there's the curation of vocabularies and people are collaborating on them. There's that section of it. How, how are they managed? And then making sure they're certain quality and things like that. And then I'm working on now the a metadata standard for at the vocabulary level and at the term level. So if you publish a vocabulary, what do you need? You need this, this, and this. And have a template, you just fill it out. And then have a, met, then have a metadata set of fields for each um, vocabulary. And so that's like, so we're just some basic stuff pulling from schema.org and data site and Dublin core and all these kinds of things. And just pushing that. The difficulty is making sure that it's got the right information, it conforms to it, and then there are different types of control vocabularies. You have like basic list, but they're not hierarchical, just have 
terms, definitions, and so forth. Then you have hierarchical things like classification systems. You also have a lot out there that have no definitions. They're just lists of values. And there's, I think there's a discussion there. I, I, I think those can be counterproductive, in fact, not having definitions. Um, but there's the process by which, what is the bar there? And there's like a more administrative managerial sort of discussion to have that what are we going to say is okay and then what not to share and then working with people and that kind of part of it. That I'm not really touching at the moment. <laughs> I'm just doing it myself, right? So if it meets my guidelines, it, it works, right? But there's that part of it too. And if, if we start collaborating, what if somebody puts in a term that is um, ambiguous with another term already in the vocabulary? It's a little different, but there's a lot of overlap. Not a good idea, right? So, but then how do you approach that discussion where you say, okay, that value doesn't work because it overlaps with this one. Maybe you go into, I mean, how strict do you want to be about it, right? I guess is the, is the, is the big one, so. I think there are, there are stages. It feels as if there's the, well, I'm going to answer Marie's first question about can Lambda Core help manage the vocabularies. The first thing I guess for me to say is that, um, we're only domain experts in some of those areas. That that was part of what we we had to we, well it took us a number of years to kind of be okay with that. But most of us were coming from natural history collections, and most um, didn't have a cultural collection at all. And so there were there were all sorts. Of, and we didn't have until Ben came along. We had been working with the the um, some paleontology folks. Uh, to try and get that bit fleshed out. We didn't have a paleontology or um, um, mineralogist in the group for the whole session. So we don't have expertise in all of the places that there should, that we have places for vocabulary sports. Does that make sense? So it's not to be slopey shouldered, but I'm not sure that what eventually becomes the maintenance group will be the, the kings and queens of all of the, the terms and vocabularies that are in lack of books. Some of them, certainly at the collection, the higher level ones, but the domain specific ones, not necessarily. So I wonder if there's, for Tadwig, there's, it's like a three tiered kind of thing, right? So you've got people like GBIF, you've got people in the mineralogical world, you've got people coming up with vocabulary. So if we can give them a, store it this way, and then it goes from there to a matching Tadwig task group or interest group, whichever way around it is. And then, so it can then sit within the non-normative side of that, right? So at least it's got a home, that other people can come find it and then a trace back to where, you know, there's a community working on it. And at, and at that point, if, if the community is like, right, we're ready, we're gonna ratify this, this becomes the control vocabulary, it moves up to, full-blown Tadwig ratification. I wonder if that's a way to do it. You're, you're muted, Ben. That makes a lot of sense. You, you stipulate a conformance document that says, okay, you can share them, but if you want to conform with this guidance document, here's what you got to do. And then you work to get it to conformance and that gets a special sort of validated sort of status. Um, it's not really ratification, it's just a set of guidelines that you know, it's very straightforward. Um, right. And once it meets that, then it's a, a validated vocabulary. That makes a lot of sense. That's an easier a process, more adaptable for control vocabulary, not a whole ratification thing. But yeah, so I don't, I don't know if that helps you, Marie. We could help you with some of it, <laughs> but all of them? I, I, I think it might end up, end up being case per case, depending on the vocabularies, but it would help for sure, to have an, a place to ask, uh, because the alternative is asking myself or my colleague at the desk, but, you know, we don't necessarily know that much more. So um, even if I don't necessarily need to have, you know, one designated person in charge of that vocabulary, although that would be nice, I'm not going to lie, but uh, it, just even knowing that there is a place I can ask uh, and would be helpful, I think, uh, even if uh, it doesn't mean that, you know, someone is dedicated to a particular uh, vocabulary. I think that would be helpful. And my colleague Cecilia is 
doing she's the one who actually is the the vocabulary lady or <laughs> i hope she doesn't know you know i i don't know how to call this role but uh at, at least uh at, at the secretariat she's the one who's been engaging a lot with um, various communities in order to make sure we have vocabulary that can be used to interpret data on gbif um I'm, I'm talking about it from the perspective of GR cycle. We have this overlap there, uh, but uh, she actually, you know, she's been working on generally much more uh, broader concepts of vocabularies. And, and then she's very aware that, you know, for one vocabulary, you're going to reach out to a certain set of different communities and for another, it's a different set, right? So uh, I think that uh, that makes sense also when it comes to collection description, because uh, as we know, it's it it it's very relative to also the, the fields you're in. And I mean, it might so be that yeah, sorry, go ahead, please. <laughs> so, so one thing I'm gonna hand over to you to um so um La the Latimer Core task group is well, obviously this this band now that we've done this thing and then the maintenance group will take over. But if Ben decides he wants to stay around and if so, did you say Cecilia? Cecilia? wants to be a part of the maintenance group, that'd be really cool because the other thing we're doing is like getting hands up for people who want to be on the maintenance group moving forward for the standard. So that might be a way that we can get some extra bodies. And then, I mean, we have as a group haven't decided how often we're going to meet. To you just point, we were meeting every week and it was hysterical and we, I, I, one of the best meetings I had every week. Um, but we probably won't be meeting every week moving forward, but we'll have some kind of regular cadence. Utah. of a, um, a tiered approach where you have the informal at different levels and then you move up to something that actually can can be ratified um the the first step for me would be to have a concept that is shared by everybody of how to describe these vocabularies. And you might not fill in everything for like, especially in the early phases, but to have this shared concept, this is how we document our vocabularies and the relationships between the different hierarchies and um, how we build structure, basically. Um, so, yeah, so I, I think that would be necessary. And um, to then have it on GBIF, that would be great because it would be accessible by, by a large community. So, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I know Ben uh, has thoughts on the way to, to like format and things, but from my perspective, when it comes to vocabularies to import in the GBIF system, already kind of have a spreadsheet template so if all else fails <laughs> uh, th there is this this one format that could be used i mean not saying that's the one i'm just saying that's where, one that would be helpful for me <laughs> so where, yeah where is that um i can find it again it's once again it's a Cecilia thing so i'm not like <laughs> but she, she sent it to me so i know it exists because i've used it um but uh, i i can try to find it while we're having the meeting and if not then i'll send it afterwards um yeah yeah so, but yeah. so that is sorry to to jump in but that is exactly the question um yeah. you have a format ben has a format recode has a format um, are we going to align or not? I mean, we can. We are all happy with our formats, so I kind of like, yeah. Um, I think that but be if you easy. really want to yeah. start like kind of aligning and and building so that everybody contributes to one pool um, that is shared by everybody, then it would make sense to to align. Sounds like y'all should be on the task group for the vocabularies. Yeah. So we need a GitHub repository that's for vocabularies that has a discussion area where people can discuss and ask questions, things like that. I, I think metadata records vocabularies are not going to, the columns are not going to be that difficult to, I, I mean, there's some core ones that are just pretty straightforward. I mean, you know, yeah, and then, license, you know language, and you know. Then when you think about structure, it actually kind of quickly expands. Um, Oh.
and it's a yeah, it becomes so. Um, it's fine if you have like your small focus vocabulary, but if you want to spread out, um, yeah, that's my experience at least. Cool. Hi, Thanks. Laura. Uh, Laura, go ahead. Hi, hello. I'm uh, Laura Tilly. I, I don't know many of you, but I'm the chair of the CTAF Earth Science Group. And I was just, uh, there was a mention of a spreadsheet format for the GBIF GeoCycle and for describing collections, correct? I was just wondering where that came from because uh, it looks like something that we developed in synthesis for um, the classification of collections. And I think some of the synthesis work, synthesis plus, uh, some of that went into the Latimer core um, definitions as well. So I was just wondering what the origin of that um, sort of spreadsheet template is. Go ahead, Marie, because I think I know your answer. Go ahead. So, so I'm not sure. I was mentioning a spreadsheet for uploading of vocabularies, but uh, mm -hmm. okay. but uh, 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 but we also have a, a now a batch upload function for uploading information in GeoCycle based on our API and the GeoCycle fields available. But uh, that's that was I, that wasn't what I was referencing. Okay. What I was I was referencing was. Um, my colleague, Cecilia, who's vocabulary lady, vocabulary lady has a vocabulary spreadsheet template that you can fill to upload vocabularies in the vocabulary server. It's a lot of vocabularies work. Um, but um, otherwise, yes, we uh, we also have a batch upload function for GR cycle, but um, um, it's based on the GR cycle fields. So like it's just like a spreadsheet with all the GR cycle fields that you can uh, put in, and then it uses our API to upload information in batch. Um, but, but that, yeah, I'm not sure that was, that was just what that, okay. that was just on the GRC. Well, it's, it'd be quite but interesting I, to see, because we do have some, yeah, like I said, we've, we, um, had some vocabulary for classifying collections and it'd be useful to sort of, because we have the report for that and we did it for paleontology and we did it for stratigraphy based off the international commission of stratigraphy. So yeah, it'd be interesting. Have a link from Do you have a link? From Do you have um, a link? Was, that would be really helpful. Yeah, if I I can provide you with like the finalized version, my personal version, but I don't know whether it's if the disco knowledge base is a bit <laughs> is down at the minute, then that's where it should be. But oh yeah, yeah, I can provide that. Yeah. Is it the discipline vocabulary from disco that you mentioned, or yes. is it? Uh, Yes. Okay. Yeah. I've seen that. And it overlaps some of the Jira cycle one, the one we inherited in Jira cycle. But yeah. um that's that's exactly the type of things where like I don't want to discard what we have because I don't want to lose information, but I also don't want to like so I don't want to replace entirely. But maybe we can just add concepts to make sure that everything is included. You know what I mean? This is exactly yeah. the type of reason why I would love to have people giving me input on that so that it's not just me in my head trying to make sense of it so um yeah yeah I was con yeah yeah so yeah I can try and find it um I I see it somewhere because there was a presentation on the G GBIF um showing the same spreadsheet that I made but it should be credited because <laughs> it's the synthesis disco ones but yeah if you need any like help I think it's useful because I have been the chair of the earth science group in CETA we I'm trying to get them to be more involved to have an input on collection vocabulary because I think it's important to make sure that they're represented so yeah we can I'm definitely interested and I can provide you with the spreadsheet yeah hey ben, who's the convener of the vocab group don't know. That's a good question. I, I, real quick question about the vocabs. Are you guys talking about just a simple one-dimensional list of values and um, definitions? Just very straightforward. Well, the, the one I have is just like a parent. Yeah, okay. just like a little hierarchy. But that, the one I have right now is flat for sure, but it makes sense to, it's kind of, it's it's given as a flat list, but it would make sense to have it as a hierarchical concept, because each has like subcategories in practice. So I would like to make it non-flat, uh, I think. And also if we can make it properly pretty in the UI, that would look less confusing for people when they fill the information. Cause then it's not like 15 times archeology span something repeated. It's like, yeah. yeah. So. It's the hierarchical structures. I'm, I'm 
wrestling classification schemes. How do you document a hierarchical structure is the, is the I'm working on. That's where I'm running into challenges. That's good. Any, anybody else? Um, oh, sorry, go ahead, Laura. You were going to talk to I oh, know. I was just yeah. I think with Symbiosis one or the Disco one was a hierarchical system, and I think the data model is in uh, the report that we published. So if you if you talk about the data model of how it all fits together, we sort of have that. Mm -hmm. Ben, yeah. question. Oh, uh, and uh, let me just ask one question. Ben, are we at an hour or ninety minutes? I can't remember what we said. Ninety minutes. Okay. Because I will have to jump out in a little bit, but I can jump out and jump back again. Um, go ahead. Um, question. Um, just a briefly question. Since I jumped in five minutes ago, uh, sorry, is it already earlier um, discussed among you? But um, it does remind me a lot of the new um, roadmap of GR cycle. So you probably have made it already an exercise, Mary, and your team at GBIF administrators. But I shared in the chat the link to what I found quite relevant for this um, mapping and vocabularies. And at our bins, uh, since um, we have for now already, let's say, inventory the zoological collections in line with the CTAF guidelines. Eh? But we are already um, looking forward to disco collection classifications. Um, yeah, to combine, of course, the, the already published data in GBIF, um, we opt to use some kind of GBIF hosted portal. But then for geological collections, probably very interesting for you, Laura, um, the geo case. Yes, we have. Uh, we are sort of in charge of the geocase, the science group, um, yeah. for specimens. So we are. With CTAP is planning to take over the development. So currently, it's held by Estonia, um, but yeah, we're putting in line new workflows and yeah, developing this further. So yeah, it would be interesting to make sure to discuss this. So with regards to. Your mention of developing a portal. Do you, are you one about the geo case? Or are you are you developing a portal in GBIF for geological collections for ge geological specimens? That's I'm really rather off. facilitating both. Um, not that I'm developing my own, but it's like, do you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's rather. Um, yeah, facilitating as uh, appropriate as possible to be as consistent as possible with all the kinds of vocabularies and and the, the most recognized portals being developed, uh, let's name GDIF, DISCO, that uh, are increasingly gaining uh, attention and um, support by all the national nodes, so um, that's realizing uh, what's 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 the concept for also including like the the geological part and well, between brackets. I um, we we intend to contact uh, or invite you, Laura, to uh, look into options to get that also higher in line, but. Yeah, it's it's just. Do you have already an insight if it's already um, interoperable with the biological vocabularies? Well, GeoCase um, at the moment it uses the A B C D E F G vocabulary yeah. it's based on, and also Darwin Core. So A B C D F G is, uh, well, the stuff the E F G, but it's made for biological collections. So it's. As well, so paleontology, but yeah, it's just for earth science geocase. So, I think we're talking about two different things, um, though, because the, yeah. there's a data standard EFG, but there's these are we're talking about control vocabularies, I mean, just list of terms with definitions, and so okay. they aren't part of EFG. And the, the, the mapping from Marie, I, I don't want to speak for cheap, but I, but I do know that EFG needs a maintenance group, it's going to get mapped to the geology extensions at Tadwig, and then maybe down the road, GBIF will 
be able to, but I mean, nothing's ratified right now. And so, and it's a totally different format. EFG is XML, Darwin Core is all JSON. There's, there's a lot of um, things to go through there, but I, I want to make sure we're not talking about two different things because I mean, okay. you know. Uh, well, in terms of terminology, we sort of need to work on this, the taxonomic backbone. I'm not like a data person. I'm not a technical person in this way. So sorry if I confuse um, concepts. But um, yeah, we can discuss this uh, Stin about uh, making sure that the vocabulary is interpretable because we also have the issue with local vocabularies used within uh, geology as well. So mm -hmm. Okay, makes sense. Make sure yes. get Thank you. Yeah, get you. Yeah. I have a question that kind of goes in a slightly different direction, if everybody's good with where they're at with that. But it, it's kind of for Marie, because sorry, you're here, so I'm going to ask. Um, in terms of the IPT, I know a new version came out just recently, which we haven't updated yet to yet. Um, what are your thoughts now that you've seen Latin Macora and it's now kind of almost ratified in terms of people using the IPT for things like metadata only data sets? That's a that's a question. <laughs> so so actually that's an open question right now. Um so for the GR cycle roadmap that we're doing, uh uh, one of the items uh, is about uh, supporting structured collection descriptors. And now uh, um, this month, uh, I've been meeting with people to try to scope this uh, item in a way that we can implement it. So so just a broad, briefly, uh, it's uh, right now in GR Psycho, we have a lot of uh, free text uh, fields uh, that describe um, collections and then the uh, you also have uh, specimens that are published on GBIF that are linked to GR Cycle, where you can have a lot of structured search, but there is nothing in, in between. So um, so there's nothing in between like broad text descriptions and 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 fully digitized specimens. So uh, the idea is to have so, some, th some sort of uh, in between where we have information that's available st structured, but it's not all the way to digitization. And the question that I've been asking people that I met is like, um, so what would be the best way to upload that information in GR cycle? And should we should we use an IPT, for example? Should we have that as an IPT? And um, it's not that it's impossible uh, at all. Uh, it's something uh, I, I still need to talk to the developers about. But one uh, feedback that I have had a few times is that... Um, People who are familiar with IPTs are not the people you want to target with having those in between. Like they're not like, if we're, we're talking about collections that just have a spreadsheet to upload because they have a few taxa in their collection that they have on record and the rest they don't know. It's not like people who would necessarily have access to an IPT and upload on the IPT and everything. So I'm not sure that it would be something that we would... Um, try to do because it would it, it's significant development time and if it means that there is no one to like use that then maybe that wouldn't be necessarily the prime place to do it but it doesn't mean that we cannot do it it could we could imagine a world where and one of the IPT data packages is a latin record data package like we have for the camera trap data package or something and it could go to GR cycle and GBIF. I'm not not saying it's going to be happening or anything. I'm just saying it, it could be something that could be conceptualized. But from talking to some people, it looks like the world of people who are using IPTs and the world of people who we want data from is not that overlapping. So I don't know if that's. I think I'm going of... the other way because the, yeah. the the concern that I have is more that there are ways in the IPT to do this kind of thing. We yeah. Do like when you fill in the metadata for a data set you're basically filling in its collection information right yeah and you have these metadata only things that you can create which are a collection description and so if, yeah. if we're not putting it into the ipt i'm okay with that but how do we decouple that overlap from the ipt so there's only one way to do it so that's actually another thing. So right now in Jira Cycle, if you publish your no, no right now in GBIF, sorry, if you write you put your data set on GBIF, it can be metadata only. It's a data set that corresponds to a collection and you register it on GBIF. 
uh, you can from Jira Cycle say, oh, my collection is this data set on GBIF. And it will be just using that directly. And every time you update your data set metadata, it will update your Jira Cycle entry. So we do it that way uh, right now. Um, it doesn't go via Latimer core. It's not more detailed than what uh, that's ex exists already in the IPT in terms of EML and metadata for data set. There's no more uh, than that, but um, that's that's what's already possible there. So that's what I mean. So if you if you write describe your collections in your IPT as metadata only data set, you register them on GBIF, you can say to GRCycle, those are collections I want to see on GRCycle and it will... Um, yeah, I guess will my have... thought is that, that, that if, if GRCycle is doing it anyway, why have a second different way to do it in in, in the IPT? Like if, oh, that's it, because... Like there's like double yeah. the um, yeah, no, exactly. So, um, so yeah, no, but the, the question was more like around, so in GeoCycle, you have a lot of fields you can fill manually and right. everything, but the question was like for those more structured information, like would it make sense to have an IPT package or something, or just use GeoCycle and upload table. And it's like something I need to, um, so I've discussed with uh, groups of people who are interested in contributing to GeoCycle, but now I need to have the conversation with the developer to know what's realistic and what's not, because that's, might kill all my dreams so um i cannot like <laughs> i know i'm on record but i cannot uh say anything that's gonna happen because until i talk with the developers then yeah we don't know no Sorry. not putting you on the spot that way i'm just curious <laughs> just put it out there seeing as we're talking about yeah yeah no of course yeah so somebody had their hand up yeah yeah i think Stin did oh yeah um, well, I found it uh, very practical and pragmatic to use. Indeed, um, the data sets initially for our bins uploaded through the IPT were imported in the, in the registry. But um, Sharon, if you ask why, um, is there still an option to choose for another way? Uh, briefly, I have the why, because imagine that um, Mollusk specimens are published through multiple data sets from one institution. So one GBIF data set wouldn't cover all um, the specimens within that collection. So that's the advantage of the GR cycle where you can aggregate uh, GBIF records from different uh, GBIF data sets into one collection. So manually adjusting it in the GBIF registry is uh, on that level also an advantage, but again, it's it's a uh, if you want if, well if we uh, with the Belgium team uh, decided okay we all already have twenty some registries for collections, not that much to make it completely automatically via an API system though, for now, sometimes duplicate manual data import. But it's it's manageable. Yeah, I guess I'm just trying to like as a provider now, like not with my Latimer core hat on, with my film museum hat on, right? Um we publish we we have an IPT because we just do. Um so we publish data sets for our for the museum, right? So I have uh the equivalent of a mollusk collection, right? Now when I when I create that data set with the digitized records, the Darwin Core records, I have to describe the collection that they're coming from. And it says something like, we have 20 million specimens and the data set only contains 150,000. So I've created this metadata for this data set, but it's not everything. So am I, should, should I now go create a metadata only record for the stuff that isn't in there? Do you see what I mean? I'm trying to, I'm trying to get my head around now the the fact that the IPT, which is great, works for digitized specimens, and I'm happy with that. That makes sense to me. But where do I put my Latimer core record? Do I do the metadata only in the IPT, or do I just not bother? And then that's my GR cycle record. And how do I get? Do you see? From the data provider side of things, I'm trying to make my life easier. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. So it's a good question. 
if I, I mean, the, the, um, the mapping of the, uh, well, I don't know if I'm, it's up to me to reply, but maybe I can try. Uh, it, so if you, um, your metadata on your GBIF data sets, the mapping is not like everything in GR cycle exists as metadata in data set. Like number of specimen is one that there's no field for in the metadata. So when we do synchronize or whatever you want to call it, some fields will be still editable in GR cycle because there's no way to give the information. Uh, you know what I mean? So, um, so yeah, so I guess what I'm saying is that like, what would be great is if I could fill those in in my IPT for my data yeah, set. Directly, and, yeah. And, and off you go. You get you yeah. get you get the digitized specimens and you get the Latimer core piece in one go. Yeah. Which would be yeah. as the data provider with an IPT, great. But obviously not everyone has one. So I'm just trying to make sure that there's everything ends up in the right places, whichever route you take. Because you're right, not everybody has an IPT, not everyone should have to have one or use one but I want the things to be equivalent and end up in the, the right place. Does that make sense, Dean? Uh, was it uh, regard to my remark? Well, um, yes, partially it makes sense, but uh, it does also make a reflection in my head about the sub-collections possibilities. What if, for instance, if you want to uh, highlight a famous collector within your mollusk collection, uh, imagine a name, let's say, or, an, or a kind of a Darwin beetles collection within the insects collection. Um, due to the current hierarchy of classification of collections in GR cycle, we are quite restricted to one level. But it's it's clear, it's it's very taxonomically findable, refindable. But Latimer Core seems to provide an extra sub hierarchy there and, and and how would it have you already practical examples of that mapping so that that is one of the the biggest use cases for for latimer calls we were working through stuff um and then i'll let maybe Kay has better thoughts on this but at that point it becomes a project right and so the whichever entity whether it's a research project or a researcher wants to aggregate all of Darwin's beetles from around the world, right? What you what would happen is that that project would come up with its own Latimer core schema and an institution can then publish those records. It wouldn't have anything to do with GBIF at that point, um, but we could we could create a Latimer core record at the Field Museum for our beetles. Sim Columbia could create theirs, um, Smithsonian could create theirs and HM London. And so the, the project, which is bringing together Darwin's beetles would then have, it would be responsible for pulling the data from those institutions. Pulling the data from GBIF data of those institutions or also other portals where the uh, beetle data are published? Right. Um, so it depends on whether GBIF, if, if GBIF gives us a way to publish Latin McCall records like that, then yes, people could get it from GBIF. But that's not what they're doing right now, which I'm not saying you should. I'm just saying that's. But yes, Lassima Core is set up to be able to do that. As a quick, as at risk of like going down the identifier um, rabbit hole, it feels like there's a way within that. And part of in Latimer Core, what we've tried to hang on to are those identifiers for collections and or at least linking out to um, occurrence level things in Martin you have methods for actually doing that in some cases, but go ahead if you got. Yeah, sorry, I'm on the bike, so I hope you can hear me. Uh, but in you any case, uh, sorry? Don't fall off your bike. I'm so, yeah. I, uh, so, uh, but in principle, actually, we all have to report to our funding agencies or whatever about also our undigitized collections. So in theory, what I would like to see is that we have to maintain that data anyway, preferably in a collection management system or in a spreadsheet or whatever, but I do want to only upload it once for everyone to reuse. So in that sense, I'm still in favor of having to publish it somewhere on an IPT or somewhere else, or make an automatic connection to my CMS that uh, pulls that data. And then you always have the most up-to-date data uh, everywhere. 
<laughs> what he said. So what I'm hearing is that I should really ask the developer if they're sure what can be not done. <laughs> so, right? so you're saying, <laughs> okay, okay. Well, it's good to know. I'll, I'll, I'll have a talk with them. I can try. <laughs> or at least just say it was brought up as a thing. Thanks, Marie. Um, we have some time. We have another. We're here until um, on the half hour. Does anybody else have anything they wanted to throw at us while we're here? Oh, I have another question, if you don't mind. Just what are the next steps now for Latin Core? Uh, so you say it's going to be ratified soon, and then timing wise, like when when is the maintenance group made, and how does okay. it happen? Yeah. So we should get ratified as soon as Ben has drafted our letter, which we're going to steal from someone else and just change the names. Um, so that's at most a couple of weeks, I guess. Oh, like I mean, we're talking, we're talking, two days. Right. It'll be done, but it'll be ratified by the end of the. It'll be be approved for ratification by the end of the week for sure. So, so that's that's the first break point. Um, the Latimer Core Group, we're still, <laughs> excuse me being weekly on a Thursday. So we will meet this Thursday and start talking about what happens next week. We haven't made firm decisions on any of that yet. We've been together for a long time and it's been great. And we might stay together, but I, you know, we can't speak for everybody else. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll start making some decisions next week about that. But yes, there will have to be a maintenance group and I'll have to decide on that, how that's gonna move forward. Happy to have you, Marie, or anyone else who wants to jump in. Go, Patricia. Um, someone who is not from Tadwick uh, told me that uh, he's confused about the MITS, which is a task group of the collection group. And he wanted to know if the MITS are somehow related to Latimon Core, or if it's to be understood completely separately as a different standard or if somehow the myths are just a sort of controlled vocabularies that will be used in Darwin Core or Latin Core. So MIDS is separate, but correct me if I'm wrong, Ben, but MIDS is separate to, to the Latin Core task group. We have, as one of our examples, um, tried to implement MIDS in Latin, Latin Core so people can see how that could work, um, but not because we're the MIDS people, just because we knew it was an important thing that people might want to do. Ben? Yes. Um, the MIDS is also a specimen level thing, the minimum information about a about a um, specimen. And Latimer Core is a collection level entity. So there are two different levels too. <clears throat> they are related. Um, it's just representing, does your collection have this minimum amount of information? It's almost like an extension of Latimer Core, but it's very targeted and focused at the specimen level. It's a different yeah, so we didn't, we didn't discuss any of the details of MIDS. That wasn't part of what we were trying to do. So that is a common question too. I think there may also be announcements somewhere that still refer to the Latimer Core um, group as the collections description group. I'm not sure if that's floating out there, but if it is, yeah. and if you see that happening somewhere, just let us know. I don't know if we had officially changed I mean, well, on the main side of Tedwick, it has not been updated. So maybe the group to needs know. to send to the GitHub, uh, okay. to the website management to change the names. Because the same person was also confused, didn't realize that Latimer was a new name of the collection okay. group. And they thought it was a new standard again. So it might be good, although it's well written in the text that it somehow shows in the title. Also. Okay, that's a good point. We will put that on the agenda for Thursday and try and unpick that. <laughs> Anyone else? I, 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 I'm very thankful that you answered my questions. <laughs> Thank you for asking your questions. It's always a pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, I, I'll try to um, to be in touch again um, 
about the vocabularies, but I have the feeling that might be good if I uh, send Cecilia also uh, um, to the front. I think yeah, she what might. We could, what we yeah. could do is make sure she gets added, um, if not to this Thursday. I suspect we'll meet this Thursday and next Thursday. Um, yeah. So if you maybe you could put her email, or should we just yeah. email? Yeah. I, I don't know if this Thursday she's going to be available, but uh, uh, yeah, I will I will uh, ch check with her. But in any case, I have your email address. I can also yeah, yeah. email you. Emailed also yeah. Matt at some point. So um, yeah. And I'll see okay. you in a couple of weeks' time anyway. So we can... yes, yes, if you have time, <laughs> it would be nice. I will make it make it happen. <laughs> yes, exactly. So uh, thanks, thanks a lot, and. Uh, if anyone is um, interested in the GR cycle roadmap and uh, wants to participate, uh, um, I, I am planning to have another community call around GR cycle and its roadmap sometimes in end of March, April. So, I mean, we have a mailing list if you want to be notified when that happened. I know some of you are already uh, registered there, but um, bring your Latin corners to the GR cycle meetings. <laughs> yeah, one, thanks. One, one note, all the, just last thing, right? all the control vocabularies you referred to are things submitted by people, right? So it's like things that people have created for their own collection. They're not from authoritative sources, right? Just um, sort of no, that... actually, yeah, no, in that case, it's not like, it's not like the ones from the GBIF where we actually have a lot of raw data for fields that used to be free text fields and we're starting to standardize. For GR cycle, uh, it's for things that are we inherited from the Smithsonian when they made GR cycle. So they someone, and I'm not sure exactly who, but someone sat down and made a vocabulary and then we got that. So there is no variation of uh, free text uh, to organize like uh, for GBIF. It's really, um, there are the values are already controlled uh there so it's not exactly the same process um it would be more a matter of making sure that it makes sense and that uh it, context can be added and maybe more concepts can be added when they are needed that type of thing but there is no mapping of raw value uh, really and most of the ones i'm working on are actually already published formally published classification schemas, vocabularies are by, by the USGS or something, right? Some lithology classification, which are different, I think different tier of things. Like they, they, oh, these, yeah, are, okay, these yeah. are established. That's what I'm, I've started. I've not started with like ones I've created. These are like the classification system all these museums use. This is the lithology classification. These are crystal habits. Well, yeah. you know, just Okay, that's what you mean. I, I wouldn't know if like, I, so I don't know enough of the history of geocycle, shame on me, to know exactly uh, how the, the vocabularies were originally made and incorporated. Could be that was based on some standards at the time, but uh, I actually don't know, so uh, I wouldn't be able to to say. Um, but th those are the ones we have, and we have values mapped to that, so we kind of I don't want to lose that. So um, yeah, that's why. I I would do it out loud. A... <laughs> Just a a quick maybe complimentary ish question. Um, someone had asked recently too about a research expeditions type of um, task group within Latimer Core or related to it. And I don't know if Ben, did you know where that is in terms of um, going through approval with Tadwig by any chance? Sabine, what was your name? Let me see if I find the email. What, what uh, von Merling. Sabine, I think, had emailed a few weeks back uh, to ask, and we were we had followed up since then, but Sabine, Sabine von Mering, I guess, had asked about a research expeditions task group um, and whether uh, that needed any sort of approval from Tadwig and or it sounded good to us a um, and it sounds complimentary. Okay. Yeah, I thought Matt had sent it up the chain, but I've, we haven't heard anything. I haven't, I haven't read it, I haven't seen, nothing's been submitted to at least members of the board for review. Because to okay. do it, you got to write a okay. charter and then submit the chart of the board, the board comes back with approval. And all that kind of right. stuff. There's a process to it. All right, we'll, we'll check on it. I'll make sure that, because I thought Matt had done that. I thought she had written something and Matt had sent it up the chain, but maybe not. Okay, and in terms of just what the steps are, we can hunt down those for her. It sounded like it might relate to some of, um, I don't know if 
some of the other folks on the call. Uh, we're looking at research expedition types of projects too, um, in terms of how to, it's another piece in the puzzle as we work through that. Um, if it's okay, I have a technical question. Um, imagine you have a data set from an institution that is providing data sets through an, AP, an IPT from GBIF. Well, initially IPTs are to publish data on GBIF. And would it be possible within UCourse to select Latimer Core as a data standard? in addition to Darwin core, like when you have the extra measurements, um, if you are familiar with the IPT, uh, with a level where you can well define or grab a view from your SQL, if it's a dynamic connection, um, sorry, it's too technical, but there you, um, I don't know the exact name, but it's about uh, measurements uh, where you can add, for instance, uh, elevation uh, details or links about thumbnails. As a matter of fact, measure yeah, measure. Yeah, indeed, exactly. Is it that kind of bottom where I, I just to to try to imagine where it can technically be fetched the Latimer core? Well, not that it has to be there, but just to have a few or to have a, 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 a less abstract idea of the implementation. If that's guess, already- thinking, sorry, go ahead. If it's not, I guess it's not yet something implemented. Um, part of what, I guess, not to put words in their mouths, but Marie and Sharon, what you were both talking through was um, if a Latimer core record full blown in an IPT were sort of a separate, um, record type that you could link to a given data set. Um, I'll stop there for a second. When you were talking about a data set, are you talking about a uh, a research collection that has, is each thing in that data set meant to be an occurrence or? Occurrence data, a specimen related occurrence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because within, I guess one of the current pieces within an occurrence data set, we have that collection ID term. Um, and one example, it doesn't have to be this way, but the way I picture it is that by way of that collection ID term that's in each occurrence um, record, you would be referencing which Latimer core, for instance, record it, it links to. And that Latimer core record uh, would be a separate resource on an IPT potentially. Hey. Um, yeah. But yeah. Yeah, I, I now I, I have a, a clearer view on, a, let's say, I can then translate it to the database developer in the sense that it's rather collect, connected through an, um, a kind of a collection table inside the database that he has to, pre well, can prepare, could prepare. Uh, all right. yeah, thank you. Not sure I followed everything, but I think it made sense. <laughs> So yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, of course, we don't know how it would be if it was implemented like that. It could be, yeah, that you have a another resource in your IPT that collect corresponds to your collection, and then it's described as Latin Core. Um, but yeah, once again, I it doesn't exist, so we can imagine. However, and then you know, the developers will make a decision, and we'll see what actually happens. So. Um, so yeah, um, but that could be a way to do it. Um, possibly, I yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'll ask. We'll see. Yeah. I think one key thing yeah, to always keep in mind is that it's Latimer Core's collection level, and you know Darwin Core's at specimen level, and so they're they're distinctly right. They they're distinctly separate from one another. Basically, Latimer Core summarizes in a way the information that's in a Darwin Core a bunch of Darwin Core records. It's just that some of the fields are repeated, but you can only do it once here because it's collection level. Yeah, when we were earlier on in the development of a uh, collection description slash Latimer core, um, we kind of wanted things both ways in terms of 
going back to what Martin had mentioned about, um, and I hope you're biking safe, Martin, uh, if you have a lot of uh, undigitized um, collections items that don't have, you know, an occurrence data set that could, in theory, be linked to a collections description level type of thing. Um, Latimer Core gives you a way to describe those things without, you know, ahead of time before you've perhaps gone and digitized more of them. Um, but we also wanted to accommodate for that possibility of down the line or where a lot of people may be currently, if you have um, those digitized collections and want to be able to, in some ways, auto like auto summarize parts of them in some way. Um, granted, we, we're hopeful for like where GR Cycle and some of the other folks are going, um, but we wanted to include any of the, the linking pieces that might facilitate implementing that kind of a summarizing, auto summarizing type of method. Um, and in the meantime, allow for more manual types of summaries as well. There's, um, there's also the, there's a special case of a Latimer record, which is the institution level record. That was one of the things as we were kind of going through this that we had to really tease apart um, because there's, a and you see it in GR cycle, there's this conflation of what is a collection and what's the institution that the collection lives within. And so that's why you'll see some of the classes in Latimer core actually relate to an institution type record because you're talking about the institution that the collections live within but they and we had a lot of going backwards and forwards so you also see like the object group we we specifically call it an object group not a collection because that that term is so loaded in people's heads as to what it actually means so we we refer very specifically to a group of objects as opposed to an institution Segwaying an aside, Ben, you have an email now from me that was sent to the secretary email, Tadwick email, about the expeditions working group request. Sabine had put together documents and stuff, and we'd copied that address, but haven't heard anything back. So I'm not sure if that still stands. I don't know who that goes to. I'll ask about today. Thank you. Said it was working group, right? All right, how are we doing? We are at 10.25, we're about five minutes. Do you want to wrap up and ask kind of Ben, giving it back to you? All right, thanks for coming today. This, this was a good conversation. This, this was good. <laughs> a lot of, a lot of good, uh, fun. Uh, the recording will be on unlisted on YouTube. Um, we won't put it publicly, but we want to be able to share it, and the notes will be um, online. And then, and please, they're they're working sessions from now through Thursday, and so there are many more. In fact, the mineralogy one is in 35 minutes, and so it's <laughs> it's just <laughs> still still trying to finish up some stuff for that one. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, but the schedule, there's an email. Check the Slack channel for the schedule, um, and then the email went out too with that kind of information. It's the same Zoom link. The one you use today works for all of the sessions. So once you have it, you can get in. You Good. Um, it just just so you know, when we are in the waiting room of the Zoom link, it shows the logo of the Bulgaria conference, the Tadwi conferences on Bulgaria, and also a, a room number. So uh, I was a bit confused when I clicked, wondering if I clicked on the right link. So just you oh, know, it's awful, uh, right? <laughs> yeah, might be the same for others. I don't know. Hey, Martin. But yeah. <laughs> With someone with the access at administrator in the Zoom of Tadwick needs to change uh, I got it. where I don't know where the general description is. This is a conference yeah, channel. Can, just for purposes. Give you a couple of minutes to go walk around, take a break, because you're doing these back to backs now, right? Okay. Cool. Well, thanks to everyone. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Stay safe, Martin. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.